Hey cats, Ed Bud here, and I'm back with another episode of Running Shoe, yay or nay? In case this is the first episode of this series that you've seen, I need to explain it for you. I'll take a look at the latest or soon to be released running shoes and tell you whether I'm gonna test them or not. It's not me saying that the shoe's terrible or it's great. I can't tell you that unless I've actually put them on foot. But I will go through my reasons as to why I might be testing them out or leaving them for others. There's been a few comments asking about that, so uh, I hope that clears things up a little bit. Okay, shoe number one today is from Saucony. It's the Triumph 19. Seems like it really wasn't that long ago since they released the 18, or at least I tried the 17, but it is. Some leaked images here of the Triumph 19 have surfaced. The 19 does seem like a bit of a progression in terms of upper design. Certainly a little change there in the tongue, perhaps the thickness, it was extremely thick in the Triumph 17, but they're still sticking with those stretchy rope laces in this max cushion shoe from Saucony. It does appear there could be a thinner mesh in the toe box area. I do recall the Triumph 17 being one of the most plush shoes that I've ever worn. Perhaps moving away from the ventilation holes in the Triumph 18 and just a thinner mesh maybe remains to be seen. I assume here that it's still Power Run Plus in the midsole rather than Power Run PB or the standard stuff. In fact, the midsole unit itself looks exactly the same as the one featured on the Triumph 18. I always felt like the tongue was just too much for me. There was just so much padding in the 17. Albeit a very comfortable shoe underfoot, that's for sure. I don't think a summer slog in a highly cushioned shoe like that with loads of padding is exactly what I want right now. The temperatures were only going up and I recall the 17 being an extremely warm shoe. So I think for me it's probably a nay on the Triumph 19. Too much cushion and bulk for me to dip into this one this time around. Shoe 2. This time it's that Streak Fly from Nike. There's a few more pictures surfacing now of that shoe. It seems like it could be on the cards relatively soon. I think I covered this one in a yay or nay some time back. It was ages ago. But again, it's still one of those very talked about shoes. Certainly from the angles that we've seen it recently, it does look very close in terms of profile to that beloved Pegasus Turbo 2. I mean, the visual appearance there, you have to say, is close. This time though, with a full Zoomax Mito. But what difference will it make? I can't help but think at this point of the Rebel 2. How will that Zoomax foam feel without its React cousin to kind of even it out? Will it be very squashy and compressive like the Rebel 2? Nike really seem to have been weighing down their daily lineup. Does make you wonder whether they're trying to be very clear that certain shoes are for daily use and others are for racing. It just seems really confused right now, the whole Nike lineup. I think they've spent a little bit too much time concentrating on the Alpha Fly, perhaps, and that Invincible run. They just spent loads of time developing those and not enough time worrying about the other daily shoes. I think this is the shoe everybody wants, though. It's going to be lightweight and a more mid-range offering as well. Whereas you've got the next percent and the Alpha Fly for the marathon. Perhaps this one's more aimed at the half marathon. But it does seem like the shoe's pretty much ready for release. I just wonder what the delay has been. Seems like ages ago that we first talked about it. Have New Balance perhaps stole a little bit of the thunder with their Rebel 2 release recently? It's been very well received as well, that shoe. Lots of people talking about it and enjoying it. I want to try out this shoe, but heaven knows when it might be actually released. I simply want the one I cannot have. Please, Nike, let me get what I want this time. Uh, for me, the street fly is a yeah. Shoe three. This time a shoe from Solomon. A recyclable shoe as well. They first talked about the Index 01 several months back, but it looks like it's actually available now. I think I covered it in the running news as well. I'll try and put a card or a link to that in the description. They do state this very much as an everyday sort of use shoe. It's not for racing, just a sort of everyday warrior. Although there's a price point of 165 Earth credits. What's that all about? It does seem rather high for an everyday shoe, don't you agree? It does look like Solomon have used a TPU-based midsole material here in the Index 01. And it does say that the parts can be easily segmented up so that pretty much everything there can be recycled. I think that's part of the problem with recycling. You've got to make sure that everything's already put into its component pieces. And a lot of running shoes, it's very hard to do that. I think this one will just make the process a little bit easier and thus uh, Solomon can recycle it and turn it back into another shoe. I think this one seems more closely aligned to something like the Allbirds Tree Dasher that was released last year and 
perhaps for shorter runs, certainly the Tree Dasher was one that you probably didn't want to go much more than about five or six miles in at a time. Solomon also state this one can be used for general relaxation as well. And I guess we should all be doing a little bit of that from time to time. It does say we got a nitrogen infused midsole material here, but I'm just a little bit confused about this shoe now. I think the sample weight's about 285 grams, so up in my size, it's certainly gonna be 330, 340 or something. I'm sure that this shoe's gonna to appeal to lots of people, those who are heavily invested in recycling and trying to be a little more ecologically friendly but i think 165 earth credits is extremely steep for a daily option so i think for the shoe it's a nay from me but it's certainly a yay for solomon's efforts for trying to be a little bit more sustainable you can't fault the intention from solomon at all shoe for today is from nike it's gonna be available on the sneakers app very soon it's the air pegasus 83 oh yeah a beautiful looking revived original here from the early 80s. It speaks to both my sneakerhead and running shoe enthusiast leanings. Look at that tongue. Oh yeah. The original Nike Air logo. It just captures me. Killer profile here and one I really want to get my hands on. Nike do appear to be keeping Sturm on the midsole material here. I would suggest it's an EVA variant. It just says foam. So could be anything but apparently that original air unit is in the heel kind of set that shoe apart really from lots of others at the time it is interesting to think that some people thought the air thing was a little bit of a gimmick i do remember reading in phil knight's book that they put one into one of the existing nike shoes at the time and he took it out and he said yep we got something special here we're on to something I mean, I could do an SL72, Tailwind 79, and Pegasus 83 face-off, couldn't I? That would make a seriously good comparison video. I could present it all in sort of VHS format as well. Yeah, I'm liking this. I think there's some mileage in it. This is obviously the shoe that started off that Pegasus series, and it's still going strong recently with the Pegasus 38. I love those suede hits. Pure retro vibes here, but the blueprint of many a modern running shoe. Even some leather portions on the back there, which are, you know, something of the past. I'm not sure exactly that anyone wants those on a modern running shoe. I could be wrong, some people might be craving that, but probably few and far between. I think from a performance aspect, the Pegasus 83 is probably a nay, but from a running shoe aspect, it's definitely a yay from me. What do you think of the four shoes on today's yay or nay? Let me know down in the comments, guys. A very special musical interlude for you today. Way back in the 60s, there was a fantastic band called The Monks. I think they only released like a couple of albums, but the best one is called Black Monk Time. It's a very simple cover, just completely black, says Monks on it, Black Monk Time. I believe these guys are American GIs who were still stationed over in Germany, and they were kind of like a rock and roll covers band, but then they decided to do their own material, and quite frankly, it's... It's pretty weird. They had a very simple setup of drums, banjo, organ, guitar, and bass, and very large tambourines. The album begins with a track called Monk Time, which is kind of like a call to arms, really. One of my favorites on the album is track four, which is called Higgle Die Piggle Die. There's just so much energy in there. Very rhythmic kind of tunes. It reminds me a little bit of uh, early material by the Battles, if you're familiar with them. I particularly like the tom drums and the distorted fuzz bass on the track, I Hate You. Later in the album, there's a track called That's My Girl, where the singer's kind of talking about how, you know, his girl's gone off with some other person. And he's pretty upset about it. Just before that, though, even better is a track called Blast Off, which is it's unhinged. It really is quite a um, unique sound. I think you'll either really enjoy it or you won't. But please do go and check it out. Black Monk Time from Monks. Okay, that's just about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. It's very much appreciated. Beast and I appreciate all of your views. Any video you watch, we very much appreciate it. Don't we, Beast? I'm going to put her down now before she bites me. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos. And it really does help us out here at the channel with that YouTube algorithm. If you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.